In a country of 80 million people, finding those responsible for last year's attempted coup has been a daunting task especially as the culprits are believed to be part of a network that secretly infiltrated Turkey for decades. The members of this terrorist organization had filtered all the public institutions and the key positions at these public institutions, such as education, health, national security, armed forces, judiciary. The government has made it a national priority to forestall another violent coup. But our is belli. Nasıl bölücü terör örgütüyle operasyonlar Temmuz'dan bu yana devam ediyor bunları yaptıysak aynı şekilde bu da bir başka bölücü terör örgütü bunun adı da Fetullahçı terör örgütü. High profile trials began in May in a purpose built courthouse to bring the coup plotters to justice. More than 200 army officers and two dozen generals stand accused of ringleading the operation. So far, the number of institutional arrests include more than three and a half thousand members of the military, more than 9,000 police officers, and nearly three and a half thousand prosecutors and judges. The tens of thousands of arrests across Turkey since the failed coup have overwhelmed the legal system here. There's an enormous backlog of cases here at the Palace of Justice and other regional courts. But the Turkish government has also widened the net to include thousands of academics, journalists, and even teachers. Yasemin taught religious studies at a school in Istanbul, but was fired last year, accused of having links to the Gulen or FETÖ organization. I was shocked because I had no relation or connection with that organization and I couldn't understand why I was suspended. Then I went on trial and found out why I was let go. The prosecutor said that I logged onto Bylock. Bylock is a mobile messaging application, an encryption software allegedly used by members of the Gulen network. Intelligence officials have been going after people suspected of having used or downloaded Bylock on their phones. The state says you can't merely download the app, users need a special code to access it. Yasemin insists she's innocent and even calls herself a fan of President Erdogan. She wrote him during his brief stint in prison in 1999 and got a reply. I didn't download or set up that application. I am not a terrorist. For Yasemin and others who feel they were unfairly sacked, a new State of Emergency Procedures Investigation Commission will begin hearing objections starting July 17th. Journalists and activists who've also been detained say they're victims of a clamp on dissent. Like Amnesty International, whose national chair and Turkish director were both detained. They reportedly face a criminal investigation on suspicion of links to an armed terrorist organization and for allegedly planning provocative events to fuel unrest in the country. Because that's the latest thing that they're doing, that if there's people who disagree with the government, they just put the label of anti-national Gulenist and, and arrest them. But Turkey's defense still stands. It's been a year since a violent coup that shook the country. The enemy is vast, elusive, and the investigations are still not over. Sandra Gatman, The Newsmakers. Still with me here in the studio is academic Adam McConnell and political editor Hakka Ojal. And we're also joined now by Onur Erim. He's a political analyst, author, and the ad ad advisor to the mayor of Ankara. Gentlemen, thanks for sticking around. Onur, thanks for joining us. So. It's been one incredible year. Has the crackdown been on, on the balance of evidence justified or has it overstepped and, and been unfair? It's been a year right now, as you said. There's, uh, I think, 148,000, mm -hmm. like the latest figure of, of people that were displaced from their jobs, whether detained or, or, or uh, jailed or not. Um, I don't know. The reason I don't know is in the beginning, we could not see the end of the abyss. And I don't know if we could still see it. Just last week, about 10 days ago, 
there was an active uh, a, a government member within the prime ministry that was detained due to FETO connection. Hmm. And this person was active. He's been working there since July 15th of last year as well. So uh, I don't know if it's enough. I don't know if, again, we're, we're seeing the end of the abyss. I don't know if we're going to see it anytime soon. Are you worried? I am worried because, uh, as I said, it's been a year and there is an active member of the prime ministerial staff mm -hmm. that was working there as they detained him. So um, is there a lot of people involved right now? Yes. My worry is, you know, how many more people are involved in this? Mm -hmm. Adam, the PKK has a geography, right? Kandil, or, you know, they have fighters. You know where you can find them. Mm -hmm. Daesh, you basically know where you can find them or there are certain fingerprints. How does the Turkish government root out the Gulenists while not casting a really wide net since, as the government says, it's sort of infiltrated all these different arms of, and arteries of society? Can you actually do it in a, in a fair and just way or are some innocent people going to be caught up when you cast a wide net? Well, the government says that they are trying to do this in as fair and just a manner as possible and that they are examining all the cases one by one. And in fact, actually thousands of people have been returned to their jobs, to their positions after examination of their cases and they were found to have not had uh, links to Fetu Lagulan's organization that, were, that would be considered dangerous. So it seems that they are trying to go about this in a fair and just manner mm -hmm. but at the same time we're talking about an organization which has been developing its membership for at least 30 years we're talking about at the minimum hundreds of thousands of people so the net has to be wide mm -hmm. oh no what uh, Kemal Kilishtarolu and others are saying now especially with the march is they're saying fine we want you to get rid of FETO but you're using the pretext of FETO to get rid of anybody who opposes the AKP-led government. Tell me why you disagree with that. Well, they're uh, undermining the fact that FETO has mm. developed very nice and very lucrative relationship with a number of different uh, groups in this country. We're now seeing their involvement with PKK. We're now seeing their involvement with the Daesh KPJ and probably many others. Mm. So it's not fair to say that, hey, you're labeling everybody as a fetoist, as, as Gulenist, as anti-government just because you don't like them. No, there seems that now there's more evidence coming out that there seems that everybody that is not in the best interest of this government, of, of this nation, has been at one point or another, uh, you know, uh, joined with FETO. Uh, at, at some, 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 some level. Now, one thing about the FETO organization in Turkey, at least by the day they operate, and this is what's really making things hard, they are, to say the least, had been operating in a very, um, in some sense, esoteric way. Uh, they have, none of this is surprise to a lot of people. What is becoming surprise to a lot of people is, you know, how much they had infiltrated. Mm -hmm. How much, I mean, we, a lot of people knew where they were going, who, what they were going into and with whom, but none of us realized they could have taken things to this level. Right. As you said, it's, it's a 30 year uh, in, in works and we don't know where this is gonna uh, end up in. Hakke Ojal, has the crackdown overall been justified or has it been unfair? Oh, is it justified? Uh, first of all, look at why we are, why government is doing this right. in the first place. Second, um, the declared proofs of involvement or attachment to this organization is not as, ar as arbitrary as Kılıçdaroğlu tries to make it look so. Is it clear though? Is it clear it to, to, to know someone when you know this person is definitely a Gulenist? Of course there is no definite thing before mm. the court or the court mm. decisions. I, we all are waiting for the court decisions. Court will decide and then they will appeal it and the appellate court or higher court, Supreme Court will decide on their cases. Then we will know for sure. However, so far there are three very uh, concrete evidence about your involvement with this organization. A, you have to have this secret program on any communication device you might have, or records of it. You may delete it, you may destroy your device, physical device, but th there are records of this thing. Mm -hmm. Government luckily found the server on which they kept right. this information. Second, when Fethullah Gülen 
when the fight started with this organization, uh, their institutions, their other financial, fi financial uh, sources and everything, uh, Bank Asia, the institution they created, um, was target of the some government or some government mm -hmm. action. Um, B Bank Asia was in the brink of collapse, and at that point, Fatullah Gülen himself asked his followers to get rid of your gold savings and everything, make right. deposits to save this bank. He said clearly, mm -hmm. and. If you had any financial records after this point, right. well... Yeah. So, so there's some hallmarks and some fingerprints, Definitely. right? Definitely. It is not arbitrary. Yeah. It, is not, it uh, doesn't categorically prove anything, but there are indications there that are could lead you to people. It, they are not as loose as right. circumstantial evidence. They Understood. are concrete evidence, but they have to go through the test of law, right. court of law. Oh, Nur Arim, I'm going to ask you a question that would lead up quite nicely to an interview I've got coming up with a retired Air Force colonel. The military. The military was involved in the coup, at least a chunk of it, infiltrated by the Gulenists, right? It was a small amount, but they almost took over the country. I mean, many people say this came very, very close. They almost assassinated the president, right? The military is currently involved in Syria. It's fighting the PKK. It's fighting Daesh. It's in northern Syria fighting the YPG. Turkey sending troops to help Qatar. At this moment in time, while all of this is going on, do you still believe that maybe the Gulenists are still within the military? I, I don't doubt that there, there's still a, a small, right. if, even if a small, a part of the Gulenists that are still inside the military. I actually don't doubt that they will probably be there till they retire or die. We're not going to get rid of everybody to, to, to some zero. Hmm. But what I have no worries about this is because the same reason that they, although they infiltrated into the military in some key uh, specs and in, in some key points before July 15th, they were not able to do it because the major part of the Turkish military always and, and every time, uh, you know, are, feel responsible to the Turkish people. That was the main reason why they couldn't succeed on the military side. Yeah. Now, they will never be able, nobody will ever be able to uh, take over the Turkish military. It's a thousand year old tradition to say the least. So for that reason, I'm sure there's gonna be some left uh, till forever, till they die, till they uh, retire. But the, the makeup of the, the, the backbone of the Turkish military itself, and especially its uh, ties, its communication with the Turkish people itself uh, it will never be able to broken uh, to be to be break. Gentlemen, it's been fascinating talking to all of you. Unfortunately, I've got to move on. But Onur Erim, Haka Ojal, and Adam McConnell, thank you very much for joining thank us. Thank you, Mark. Thank, thank you. you.